Welcome to my course uh, electrochemical energy storage and uh, we are now in module 4 where uh, we are talking about the basic components of lithium ion batteries. We talked about positive electrode, negative electrode, separator, electrolyte, tab, binder um, and uh, other components which are required for lithium ion cell and this lecture uh, that is to introduce the novel materials for lithium ion rechargeable cells. So, so far whatever we have described as you can understand that these are uh, only uh, some countable uh, material as positive and negative uh, electrode. Negative electrode they are uh, in commercial perspective uh, they are very limited only graphite and MCMB that is used silicon also as alloy element that is coming into uh, the market and in positive electrode either it is layer kind or spinel based or uh, olivin type structure and the capacity uh, that is not being improved that much and uh, the power density for example, it is difficult to enhance more. But uh, for uh, not for consumer electronic application, but if you go for electric vehicles, then suddenly you know you, you want to have uh, cells which are having both energy density, large energy density and power density simultaneously. So, something uh, which are novel that is needed to be done. So, I will cite uh, uh, the examples that uh, how you can actually uh, introduce uh, novelty uh, in the material development, we call that material engineering. We, we, we are using a known type of material, but uh, engineered them for a specific purpose. So, one of such things uh, is use the positive electrode, uh, which is uh, actually for sodium ion cell, uh, studied mainly on sodium ion cell and use this for lithium ion rechargeable cells. So, this is a novel concept uh, that was introduced some 5 to 6 years back and then they are not pursued right because of a variety of reasons. So, I will show you that uh, how you can actually um, make a high performance uh, lithium ion battery particularly having high power density which is uh, important for um, having uh, a better acceleration of uh, electric vehicles. So, uh, this material they are having a nasicon type of structure, I will define the structure, a sodium ion uh, super ionic conductor. So, that nasicon structured material is typically this uh, Na3 V2 PO4 hole 3. So, this is one of the examples. So, we will talk about their synthesis, their structure and their morphology. Then we will introduce uh, the concept of a hybrid lithium ion cell using a sodium ion battery material in lithium ion. So, it is some kind of dual ion characteristics. So, what is their mechanism of operation? And then uh, what can be done is uh, uh, this type of material, uh, they are kinetics are diffusion controlled and supercapacitor you know that uh, they are uh, having a adsorption of the charge layer to give the high capacity. So, making some kind of hybrid of this dual ion positive electrode with supercapacitor. So, we term this as a hybrid lithium ion cell and then another hybridization with supercapacitor and what could be their electrochemical performance. So, that is the novelty uh, that uh, uh, I am planning to discuss in this particular lecture. Now, this sodium ion superconduct, super ionic conductors, they have a general formula uh, like A x, where A could be lithium in this case whatever we have considered it is sodium and M is this one is a transition metals like titanium, vanadium, iron and X here it is 
uh, it constitutes this uh, um, tetrahedral uh, criteria, uh, tetrahedral kind of uh, construction. Uh, it constitutes silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, molybdenum. So, this is a general formula. So, now this type of material, they are having very high structural stability because mainly the strong bonding of this phosphate PO4 hole 3 due to this network. And also they have relatively open structure, you know the sodium is not uh, very structurally integrated in that way. So, it is having a relatively open framework structure and it yields uh, higher ionic mobility uh, than the phosphate based cathode that we have considered like lithium iron phosphate because of their structures. So, there are two position of this sodium, uh, one position we will uh, call position number 1 and another is position number 2. So, there are three sodium uh, in our structure, whatever structure we will be talking about in a 3 B 2 P O 4 whole 3. So, there are per unit cell there are three sodium ion. So, out of this three, uh, whatever is there in position 1, two sodium ions are there you can take them out uh, quite easily. But another position where sodium stays that are very stubborn, they cannot be taken out. So, this material um, being a uh, polyanion kind of structure, you have seen, you remember this uh, uh, spinodial decomposition type of uh, feature, uh, this uh, free energy composition whatever I discussed earlier. So, it is having a flat plateau. So, here uh, the flat plateau uh, is in this voltage range which is quite good around 4 volt range. Additionally, in, in, in the lower voltage ranges also there are plateaus. So, the same material you can use one as anode and the same material as cathode and operate at two different voltage range and use a symmetric electrode battery unlike your graphite lithium cobalt oxide which is asymmetric, here you can have a symmetric kind of batteries. Now, this has been studied for sodium ion battery, it is not a new material, but it has been studied there. But what we uh, plan to do or plan to show that this particular material, now we want to use for lithium ion intercalation. So, sodium is there, you think of it that we need to get rid of the sodium first and somehow put lithium inside the structure and then you cycle it. So, sodium is being not that affluent, uh, they cannot enter into the structure, but lithium will go in and come out. So, that is the whole idea. Now, look at this structure of this uh, Nasican type of material. Uh, we are using it for lithium ion cell. Uh, you can see uh, this uh, VO6 kind of octahedra. So, this Na3, V2, PO4, this vanadium, they stay in a octahedral configuration, this VO6 type of octahedral configuration. And PO4, uh, phosphorus stay here, this small green uh, button. So, that uh, is in a tetrahedral configuration. So, they constitutes together uh, a so called lantern structure and uh, there you have three such uh, PO4 and two such V2. So, this is the lantern structure. So, it constitutes V2 PO4 whole 3 and in between somewhere these two sites that is occupied by 3 sodium. So, total there are 3 sodiums, but crystallographic Wyckoff position of uh, them are not 3, uh, one for 2 and another for the remaining one. So, it forms this kind of lantern unit first and they are connected together to form this type of Nasicon structure. Now, it is relatively easy to uh, make this kind of structure. So, uh, usually uh, this uh, ammonium VPO, VO3, uh, 
uh, citric acid and sodium dihydrogen phosphate. They are mixed together here. They are stirred at 80 degrees Celsius and a light blue color solution results. Then again stirring continues and finally, uh, we got a gel and you anneal this gel in argon ambient because your phosphorus is there, it should not get oxidized. And finally, you get uh, this type of uh, NH3B2PO4 kind of structure. So, this is a simple solution process one can adopt. Only complicacy is that which will have to be annealed in argon or inert ambient. Now, again you will have to uh, do uh, the Ritwell refinement to see that whether there is any um, impurity phase. So, this is uh, the space group uh, is uh, R 3 bar C. So, you may not be familiar with this space group, but you need to uh, provide this space group so that theoretically the structural XRD can be uh, generated. Uh, in a program and then we match it with the experimental curve and then finally, we get whether this is phase pure, what are the lattice parameter. So, you can see it is a rhombohedral type of structure, you, you are familiar with rhombohedral structure is equal to B, uh, C parameter is a bit larger and uh, alpha and beta that is 90 degree and gamma is 120. So, that is a phase pure thing and not only that, you can also identify that uh, the position of this sodium, where exactly they are sitting, whether it is 1 or uh, 2 Wyckoff position. So, that is also identified and uh, this was coated with amorphous carbon layer because the conduct electronic conductivity of this material is not that good. So, it was coated with conducting carbon and uh, from this X-ray diffraction, uh, we can also identify that the coated layer uh, is uh, amorphous. You know that many instances the active material, they are coated with oxide or phosphide either to impart electronic conductivity or to reduce the reactivity of the electrolyte and several other purposes. Now, the structure is very interesting. You see that once you do and prepare this, so this carbon coated um, particles, uh, they are um, having a flower like structure. So, these flowers have petals and they are coated with carbon. So, by doing lot of microscopy, you can identify this carbon layer. They are amorphous by TM analysis, but the crystalline part is almost like single crystal, very, very highly crystalline. So, how they are coated, how the carbons are coated, how the structure looks like and how the uh, lattice fringe is there. These are atom, uh, atomic planes you can see. So, you can know what is their D spacing that indeed this NVP has formed. So, lot of characterization is required to understand this structure in a better way. Now, the mechanism of using this uh, sodium ion battery is something uh, like this. In sodium ion cell, uh, it is exactly like lithium ion cell. I have a separate module to talk about sodium ion battery. So, there also you will find that instead of lithium, here sodium is intercalating. So, you may have a layer structure here, you may have a layer structure here. But the difference is there between sodium and lithium because this molecular weight is quite high as compared to this one. So, the gravimetric energy density of this material is quite low and these are bulky because of their size. So, the diffusion is also slower. So, as a battery, it is good for storage, storage battery, but for mobility is not that good. So, it is not that lighter, you will have to carry this weight in your scooter or in your uh, cycle or uh, in a bus. So, huge battery uh, you will have to carry. But if it is a storage for the renewable energy, it is a stationary battery like your redox flow battery. So, that is ok. So, now what uh, we can do that during charging, uh, 
uh, you can first extract this sodium through a lithium ion salt. So, this sodium using a lithium ion based electrolyte, they cannot uh, be going uh, here, it cannot be completely stopped, but uh, there is a limited possibility for it to uh, intercalate inside this, this uh, uh, anode material during charging. But there are plenty of lithium, plenty of lithium is there. So, although sodium cannot go here, but lithium from the electrolyte that can pass and go to the anode site. So, you are taking out all the sodium and leaving them in the electrolyte, right? Not all the sodium, 2 out of 3 in the unit cell, and you are leaving it here. And then during charge, your lithium from the electrolyte that is going to the anode, and during discharge, this lithium go and then they occupy the position of sodium. So, advantage is that lithium is having a smaller size as compared to sodium. So, this diffusion is quite faster. So, in the subsequent cycle, whenever they will start to diffuse, that will be quite fast. So, that is the advantage of making this kind of structure. So, here is a comparison. Voltage wise, you will increase the voltage as compared to sodium. Atomic weight this is quite low as compared to this. Ionic radius, it is quite low as compared to this, so it will be faster. And diffusion coefficient, you can see that this is also quite faster as compared to sodium. So, we call this kind of technology is hybrid lithium ion battery. So, what is happening here that is pictographically shown here. So, you can now see that within the lantern structure, there are two different types of position of sodium 1 and sodium 2. So, there are 2 and 1, this 3 total your uh, material and you are extracting two of them, one still remain there and you are uh, pushing lithium into it. So, during charge, sodium is coming out. During discharge, you will replace it by lithium. You can do deep discharge, the same thing that we did for spinel type of positive material. So, you can do deep discharge and you can insert extra sodium into, sorry, extra lithium into it at lower voltage. And that is why I told that you can use uh, this material as a both anode and cathode. So, one will operate at lower voltage, we will use at anode and higher voltage as a cathode to make a symmetric kind of battery. One can actually make this kind of compound um, artificially, but it will not have this kind of structure. So, there is a structural limitation of having it. So, if you see the electrochemical performance of the half cell configuration, again we will do the four types of characteristics. One is cyclic voltammetry. Uh, although I have not shown cyclic voltammetry here, uh, this is uh, the differential capacity analysis and you can get this kind of plateau and after a charge, if you take out after first discharge the electrode and do x-ray diffraction, you will see difference between the pristine positive electrode and the discharged uh, positive electrode and indeed you will see that this lithium based compound is artificially been prepared. So, that can be tested to support our postulation. The cyclability is quite good, rate performance is excellent because of the fact that you can very fast way lithium can be transported. So, lot of advantage of this so called hybrid lithium ion batteries. Now, what, you, what can be done is uh, to make a composite with activated carbon, which is super capacitive material. We already talked about it, it is having low specific energy, about 5 to 10 watt hour per kg. So, 
charge is stored only at the surface, but it is having very good power density, more than 1 kilowatt per kg. So, electric charge are just accumulated on the electrode surface and it is a non-faradic kind of surface reaction. The material that is useful for this is activated carbon and uh, you can see the their morphological characteristics of a commercial activated carbon. There are a lot of fine pores available so that the electrolyte can be pushed through inside and a uh, lot of charge can be stored. Uh, it is almost uh, activated carbon is uh, amorphous kind of material. So, that uh, is used in a supercapacitor. So, all the characteristics of the supercapacitor that is there. So, there is no oxidation reduction reaction. The charge and discharge they are very fast and almost straight line. There is no plateau, no uh, S type of uh, voltage profile that you will find because the mechanism is completely different and almost uh, no uh, uh, change in uh, the discharge capacity with cycling, excellent cyclability, but the specific capacity is low, not like paradigm type of material. Coulombic efficiency is also reasonably good and uh, also you can see that it has excellent uh, rate performance because uh, current, there is no diffusion involved. So, rate performance is quite uh, impressive. Now, you can do hybridization of this supercapacitor with that uh, hybrid battery. In various way we can do, uh, one is, uh, is internal hybrid and another one is external hybrid. So, external hybrid is uh, uh, just to connect a supercapacitor with a battery. So, this is not very lucrative, but internal hybrid that can be internal serial hybrid. That means, one part that will be battery, another part that will be supercapacitor and this is a hybrid kind of um, battery. Lot of names are there, bat cap some people tell. Uh, so, that is internal serial hybrid. Internal and parallel hybrid is that inside each of this electrode, you are mixing both battery type material and supercapacitor type of material. So, once you do that, then we call that this is internal parallel hybrid material. So, this is quite interesting. So, if you know about the Reagan plot, where the power density and energy density is plotted together, then if you want to use the material in electric vehicles, then its power density and is uh, sorry, its energy density and power density, they should be simultaneously high. If pure lithium ion battery, if you see that if you want to increase the power in the energy density, its power density will be lowered. If you want to increase the power density, its energy density will be lowered. Capacitor is always having good power density, but it has very poor energy density. So, we will have to have the combined characteristics and in combined characteristics, you have no other option rather than to mix the supercapacitor with the battery. There are a lot of issues involved, but as you can see electric vehicles, then uh, plug-in electric vehicles, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles or hybrid electric vehicles, which I will define in my next lecture. Here you have the problem because with the existing material you cannot achieve this. So, here what can be done, um, this NVP uh, which is coated with carbon, uh, there uh, we can have uh, the fraction change of the capacitor. So, here for example, the active material is 80, this is 0 carbon black and PVDF. This is a normal um, hybrid capacitor like uh, sodium instead of uh, sorry lithium is used instead of sodium. 
then you can add 70 percent of active carbon, you can add 40 percent of active carbon and this is the characteristics of pure activated carbon. So, here the active material is 80 percent and then this active material is changed here, you see 56, 24, 32, 48. So, this type of uh, uh, material can be uh, made artificially and this is uh, the kind of microstructure that you will get. So, you can clearly identify your flower like structure and you can clearly identify your, uh, uh, your um, super capacitative material that is forming a uh, hybrid electrode. So, the electrochemical performance of this kind of hybrid it shows uh, clearly it can show the uh, double layer region here and uh, the battery type region and there are ways to delineate it. So, I will try to explain it uh, in one of my lectures that how you can delineate the capacitative part uh, yielding the capacity and the battery part uh, from this kind of uh, cyclic voltammetry plot. So, I am not going into the details, but you must appreciate that instead of this pure uh, diffusion kind of uh, battery activity, you have there is some change uh, because of the inclusion of uh, super capacitive material. So, this is the comparison of uh, uh, the cyclability for all this material that exactly has been prepared carbon coated NVP then two different um, activated carbon composite with this carbon coated NVP and the activated carbon. So, activated carbon is very low specific capacity and then this is progressively higher and you see that in case of NVP C it is still higher because compared to this your activated carbon has smaller capacity. So, that is taking a little bit capacity from this composite, but there is no capacity fading at least in half cell. So, this is the electrochemical performance uh, um, comparison in case of pure battery type of material you see that the plateau is quite well developed and the straight line kind of thing in supercapacitor is also quite well developed. But once you have a composite it is in between these two. So, therefore, this type of uh, chair like uh, structure of the uh, potential versus capacity with different activated carbon concentration that is as per as our ex expectation rate performance of this is quite good as compared to your NVP type of material as you can see here. Progressively it is good because our activated carbon is taking care of the rate performance. Now, there is a synergic effect that means, once you are actually mixing these two thing together following the mixing rule you can actually calculate uh, what should be the capacitor. So, the difference in capacity uh, which is experimentally observed and which is actually practically observ observed. So, ideally it should be 0, but it is not the case, it is not 0. So, uh, one can do uh, this uh, del Q measurement which is the capacity difference between experimental and uh, the practical measurement, always you will find that this is a bit higher than expected. For example, if you take this uh, normal carbon coated NVP, uh, its fraction is 80. So, discharge capacity you can calculate only 35 percent, sorry 35 uh, is the discharge capacity but predicted discharge capacity is also 35. So, the change is 0 here. Pure activated carbon if you take then also whatever is expected practically you get it. 
So the del Q value is 0. But if you take for example this composite, then your experimental discharge capacity uh, is 58 and actual predicted capacity is 30. So there is a gain of 28. So there is some kind of synergic effect due to the presence of both this component somehow the capacity can be enhanced. So, this is a good set of material and uh, uh, research should be uh, initiated uh, in this direction and therefore, I consider this is one of the novel material for next generation battery particularly where high power density is required. So, most of the work uh, that has been taken from uh, my ongoing uh, PhD students work and this is a reasonably good paper, uh, nicely explained all these com concepts. So, this is your study material and uh, out of this uh, advanced material for lithium ion battery, you will find something similar uh, people are thinking about. So, we all in the community whoever works in lithium ion battery, we are trying different different types of thing uh, so that we can uh, actually cater the need of the uh, requirement of electric vehicle battery which will be coming in a big way in next uh, two decades. So, uh, mm, here is the conclusion that novelty of using uh, Nasicon type of positive electrode for lithium ion intercalation and remember the source of lithium here is entirely the electrolyte because there is no lithium in the positive part and no lithium in the negative part as well. Although we have tested so far using sodium sorry lithium foil, but actual source in full cell will be entirely from the electrolyte. Amorphous carbon coated uh, nanostructured NVP that was used as a positive material how they are synthesized, what is their structure and morphology etcetera that has been covered. Then uh, in one slide we have explained that uh, what is the exact lithium and intercalation mechanism in this material. And finally, supercapacitor and this hybrid lithium ion cell, their electrochemical characteristics in half cell configuration I have shown to you. Thank you for your attention.